be the most uh, uh, well-known preacher in the world. All you have to do is just let me instruct you and tell you what to do. Just that suddenly you realize that you were stuck all that time uh, with the devil and What's going on, Kingdom Team Live? I hope you're doing well. Uh, coming to you with a video that I've clipped out of a larger sermon, and um, it's of Paul Cain, and he's sharing an interesting story about how he met the devil, and it comes with a warning. So I want us to watch this and then uh, discuss it a little further. Uh, if you don't know who Paul Cain is, Paul Cain uh, was born in 1929. At the age 18, in the 1940s, became a healing evangelist with a heavy prophetic gift. Uh, went into obscurity for a while, disappeared on the scene, and then was was uh, came back under Mike Bickle and was a part of kind of the the, the charismatic movement that was happening around the IHOP, you know, time. Tell me what you think about this. Now we're right back to Mr. Joseph Blackburn, the devil himself. I've never had an experience like that before. By the way, this is filmed in 2018, and he passed away in 2019. Um, uh, and, and this is kind of the last years of his life that he's sharing this message. So he's going to talk about Joseph Blackburn, the man he believes to be the actual devil. More sense. I was uh, planning on building a church in Los Angeles, and some people had uh, secured one of the most uh, beautiful auditoriums called the World Theater, or the Markel Theater at that time. And uh, we were having... Um, a huge crowd one night, and a man walked in the building as the offering was being taken, and he looked, uh, I don't think I would ever describe a man as being beautiful, but he was the most handsome man <laughs> yeah, sure I've ever seen either. in my life. And he looked like a movie star without makeup, without needing okay. makeup. And he had a tuxedo on, and he was dressed fit to kill, as they say. So I was uh, trying to sit down, I was taking the offering, and, I, and so after the offering place were being passed, he motioned me to come to the edge of the platform like this, and I knelt down, and he came up. He said, Mr. Kane, I am sent from the source, and I have a, a message for you. All right, so I just want you to imagine, uh, Paul Kane has been uh, invited into a private conversation with a well-dressed man who looks like a movie star, who is sharing what sounds like gospel wording, right? He's like, I've been sent from the source. I have a message to share with you. Um, you know, it's easy to wonder, like, what was this guy thinking taking this meeting? But, you know, the devil masquerades as an angel of light. Could I have an audience with you after the meeting tonight? And so I was totally mesmerized with this man. And I said, well, sure, after the meeting, we'll go up to my office and... Uh, uh, so we did. I was preaching that night a message of all messages on Jesus, the light of Come the on. world. That's a great The first one. thing he said when, we, when he was seated uh, upstairs in the office, he looked at me and he said, uh, Mr. Kane, if you can believe, I am the light of the world, just like you preached uh -oh. tonight. And I'm telling you, looking at him and the glow about him, I was... Everything he said was so loving and Christ-like. He named the childhood sins, the little boy sins that I committed, and I thought were awful, you know. And uh, But he said, you know, I only chuckled. When you were in that little red uh, wagon, and the name of it, he, uh, he revealed the name of it, and he said, uh, and the wheel came off, and you kicked it, and you um, said, uh, you know, he told me the word I said, only grown-ups would use in those days. He said, do you realize how much I loved you? He said, I just loved you. That wasn't, wow. uh, uh, there wasn't anything wrong with that. So I just, I just want you to see this too. See, the devil offers people a, a false form of love. He, he wants people, and he's offering to cover Paul Cain's sins, um, but the devil, or this man, is offering to cover his sins, and he's posing as Jesus at this moment. And so it's easy for us to judge, because we see in hindsight, but at this moment, all he knew was this person who is radiating glory is now covering his sins and, 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 and talking in such a Christ-like, loving way. Well, you're just covering all my sins, you know. He increased in, uh, in the way uh, he was manifested till I, I thought, if I miss this, and this is my, uh, my only opportunity, you know, to respond. If I miss my day of grace, and I miss this day, and this is Jesus, wow. then what am I going to do in the day of judgment? So I almost fell on my knees Whoa. to worship him because it was that real. So yeah. um, 
uh, as they continue to, uh, to uh, say things, it already said, you know, if you can believe I am that light, the light of the world you preached about. So he told me that uh, he was going to make me, if I would listen to him, he was going to make me the most famous preacher in the world and the wealthiest wow. preacher in the world, and that uh, he would be able to, to procure or, or purchase that building for me. This reminds me of the start of uh, even Jesus' ministry. You know, the Bible says that Satan brought Jesus up on a high place and offered him the world, kept asking to bow before him. You know, the interesting thing is the devil is going to offer you, uh, he'll offer you just about anything for success. We see famous people uh, on, on TikTok and, and YouTube right now who actually talk about selling their soul to the devil. Um, and here, Paul Cain is saying he was offered to be the most wealthy pastor and, and to have a, a, a church with influence and, and to be well known all over the world. And I got to tell you, uh, these are these are the pitfalls for pastors. These are the things that if we're not careful, they will draw us away from the Lord. And the devil's offering pretty much anything a pastor's heart would want at this moment. And so uh, he's about to worship him. We find out what he I does. We call it uh, uh, Hollywood Temple. And it would appeal to the Jewish population and, and the movie oh. stars and said, they will come and fall at your feet. Well, You'll be the most... Um, uh, well-known preacher in the world. Holy All you God. have to do is just let me instruct you and tell you uh, what to do. When I uh, heard him saying, you know, that uh, trying to get me to worship him and trying to get me to, to agree that he would, um, he would just map out the course of my, the rest of my life, make me the most famous and wealthiest person in the ministry. When I came downstairs, my mother, who had more discernment than anybody I've ever known, she said, son, do you realize that you were shut up all that time uh, with the devil himself. Whoa, that's insane. Can you imagine? She's down there. So and, we were and down here on our faces praying. Wow, she's just praying to, for him at this time. Destroy you. Yeah. And believe me, I lived in fear for a year or two after that. I couldn't sleep in a room without the light was on. Wow. I was traveling alone in those days, and uh, I was uh, afraid that to look in my rearview mirror in the car, I was afraid he would appear in the back seat. I was afraid he'd appear, appear in the front seat with me. can't even me. imagine. And my life was just uh, uh, tainted with fear. And like I say, I'd, I'd leave the light on. Everywhere I'd go, I'd leave the light on all night. But one night, I was driving all night to get from Midland, Odessa, Texas, to my home in Garland, Texas. I found a, uh, I couldn't, uh, couldn't find a motel to, to stop everything, no vacancy, no vacancy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so I saw a real nice looking place. I pulled off the road uh -oh. and it was a beautiful uh, colonial type building. I thought, well, this is just a perfect place for me to rest and then I'll drive on. And so when I lowered the seat, I was driving on Lincoln in those days and uh, looked <laughs> in the mirror and I thought, Lord, please don't let him appear. Don't wow. let him appear with me while I'm alone ever again. And so when I got in a restful position, I looked in this beautiful colonial building, had a sign across it, and it read, Blackburn Mortuary. Yo. Well, I want you to know that <laughs> went through my body like yeah. liquid fire. And I, I bet. I, I, I don't think anyone realized how fast you can start <laughs> a Lincoln Continental. But yeah, I yeah. started that thing up, and the seat was still wow. in a reclining position. I was holding on to the wheel, yeah. <laughs> driving uh, as fast as I could to, wow. to get home. I drove all night long. I still didn't want to see Mr. Blackburn yeah. ever again. And uh, so that was the story. And then, so, so that's the story. Paul Cain has an encounter with a good-looking man who radiates glory, tries to cover his sin, offers him everything he could ever want, his mother has the discernment to let him know you were in the presence of the devil and we were praying that he wouldn't steal your soul, that you wouldn't give in to this, this temptation he was giving you. After that encounter, Paul Cain spends the next couple of years kind of fearful of, of never wanting to have that encounter again because it caused him so much fear. Um, and, and with all that, now listen to the, what he says next. And then hear the warning, because this isn't just about churches. This is about our life in general. We cannot accept a false gospel, the gospel of, of, of this Blackburn character, the gospel of the devil. We cannot accept a lesser gospel than the gospel of Jesus Christ. Yesterday or the day before, I began to think, you know, there, there's, this, uh, there's a mega church here and there 
that takes in millions, one takes in hundreds of millions of Ka-ching. dollars a year. Yeah. And I'm wondering, did Mr. Blackburn, as the devil himself, appear and offer the same thing to them they offered to me? And it's very uh, plausible. It could happen wow. because these churches are preaching uh, a gospel without uh, the shedding of blood. There's no remission of sins. They don't preach Whoa. that. They just think, uh, God's not mad at you. Whatever you've done, whoever you did it with, God is not mad at you. Wow. And just taking, taking them off the hook. Yeah. No need for repentance. This is a no false need gospel. for the cross. Whoa. No need for the shedding of the blood of Jesus Come Christ. On. And it just shook me from my very foundations to think that someone is here in England that may be under that spell. Wow. We have someone in the United States that may be under that spell. The enemy, Mr. Blackburn, is out to deceive the whole world if it Come were on. possible. He's out to deceive you as an individual. Yeah. He's out to deceive your children. He's out Whoa. to deceive your mate, your loved ones. And we must realize that the, the gospel is being preached without the blood of Christ, without um, the cross, is no gospel at all. And we need to know that any time you're listening to a very successful person, who made them a success? Was it really God? Was it really the Bible themes for prosperity? Or was it something, repaint the gospel, or republish the gospel, or or do the gospel in a way that would not bring glory and honor and praise and significance to the Lord Jesus Christ? Let me ask you that. Who are you following? Do you know their, their motivations? Does the gospel the, uh, of your pa- is your pastor preaching a gospel that includes the, the, the shedding of Jesus' blood that, that, and, and, and the, the death and resurrection of Jesus that, that pays the price for your sins? Is he talking about sin? Is she talking about sin? Is the person you're following online, do they talk about sin and, and, and the need for repentance and the need for confession and the need for the blood of Jesus? And, and I mean, are they talking about these things? Who are you following? One of the dangers in our culture currently is a celebrity culture culture where pastors have been raised up to be celebrities. Now, I'm not saying being famous as a pastor is a problem. I'm saying be careful of who you follow and make sure they're preaching the gospel that includes the full gospel, including repentance, which means turning away from your sins. The need for Jesus to cleanse your soul, to take care and pay for these sins. If they're telling you, hey, your sin is sin, but God's okay with it, man, you need to check out who you're hanging out with in this season. I want you to know that it's most important that we make the Lord Jesus Christ our Savior. It's most important that we tell God who he is. Yes, that's right. He doesn't need to know who he is. He already knows it, but he needs to know that we know who he is. And he's... He's sovereign Redeemer. He's Amen. sovereign God. He's Almighty Amen. God. Amen. He's the Father of the Lord Jesus Christ, His only begotten Son. Whoa. And He is here today to heal and to save and deliver come on, and to bring come your, on. Come every on. one of your. This is this is a powerful message. I'm going to link below the whole video so you can watch it. But hear me on what I'm saying. I, I, I feel like there's two warnings that we can find inside of this teaching that that Paul Cain gave. First is, the devil will offer you just about any. Some of us, we have sold our souls for just fleshly things, just for the pleasures of of what makes us happy at that moment. And we've walked away from Jesus, or we're not even accepting the offer of Jesus that he died on the cross for us. Some of us have have given that up for, for, for nothing. And others, they have literally sold their soul for the, the chance to have fame and fortune. I, I've seen so many celebrities that, that have reported selling their soul to the devil. Well, isn't it possible too that there are celebrity pastors and leaders and, and people in high places who have taken this offer? You need to be careful who you follow. Don't attend a church that doesn't preach the full gospel, that doesn't talk about the need to repent from sin, that, that tells you you're okay right where you're at and, and doesn't encourage encourage you to be, you know, to come into the knowledge of Jesus. We can't fall for that. The other warning is a gospel without Jesus, without the cross, without the resurrection uh, from the grave that doesn't offer repentance of sin is not a true gospel. And don't fall for it. Don't fall for a self-help Jesus. Jesus didn't come just to give you help. He came to reform and change your life forever, to cleanse you of your sins, to give you new life and new hope. Self-help will only make you feel good for a season, but the gospel will change your life forever. 
That's what matters. And I think that's the warning that's been given in here. So I, I, I just, I saw this a while back, this video, and it really moved me because it was just a random video that played on, on YouTube autoplay. And when I heard this, it just, I paused and, and, and just have been thinking about this story for so long. So I'm excited to share this with you today. If you if you find this helpful, not only uh, you know like and subscribe what we're doing here, but maybe go check out the full sermon. This is one of the last uh, you know sermons of Paul Kane's life, and uh, man, there's so many interesting stories. But the message he preaches is a gospel of Jesus who loves you, who died on the cross for your sins. And it's one the church can't walk away from. We can't walk away from uh, talking about the sin issue. We can't walk away from the cross. We can't walk away from the fact that Jesus died on the cross and rose again, and that he paid the price for sin. So a gospel that doesn't address the sin in our life is a gospel that does us no good. Amen? So I hope you found that helpful. I'm putting the link below in the description if you wanna watch the full video of this. Um, I'm Terry, and uh, this has been Kingdom Team Live. We'll catch you on the next one, guys.